you ever heard the story of a young Ghanaian who was tipped to replace or succeed the word Pele? That Ghanaian is seated here before us to speak to us um, about what it would take Ghana to win AFCON 2019, about what he's been doing out of football and what inspired him to set up an academy called the Glow Lamp Soccer Academy. But before the Glow Lamp Soccer Academy, there was a school. Ni, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. A pleasure to have you here in the studio. What have you been up to? Well, uh, I'm sure for now it's my soccer academy and uh, after football for about, let's say, uh, 10 years now. Uh, these two things is keeping me active, you know, going up and down. Uh, especially, I'm sure, the, the soccer academy. A footballer, what, what influenced you to set up a school? Well, it's a bit deep. I mean, uh, as growing up, when growing up, I mean, uh, school was a problem for me. And my parents made their so rest in perfect peace. I'm sure they, their wish is for me to go to school, for yeah. sure. But, you know, those days, football is what I wanted to do. Sometimes I'll be beaten when I come home from school punish and all that. So when I grew up, uh, after signing my professional contract, which I did not know how much the money was, I did not know what was in the, in the even the contract. Uh, so due to that, I lost a lot. Let's say money. I'm, I'm very happy. I'm most grateful for what I've had, yeah. I have now. But I'm sure if my education background was very good, I was able to read and write at that time. I'm sure I should have been better off. Uh, so that's why I decided to set up the educational school because what I went through as a child, I don't think, uh, I don't want anybody's child to go through what I went through as a child. So that's why I decided to set up the educational school and so far so good, it's doing very well. The past 16 years now I'm, I'm able to produce a brilliant student. I think this badge will be my 13th badge if I'm not lying. Well. And uh, most of them are diplomat, MPs, doctors, lawyers, what MPs. I did not have as a child. So I'm most grateful. Do you have some impalments right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I have uh, one or say it's in, it's in parliament. And then even Rahim Banda, Rahim was from my school. <laughs> <laughs> you are giving back to society what you lost. Um, you, you mentioned signing when you signed your professional contract and you didn't know the content of that contract. Who got you to sign that contract that you didn't know anything about it? Well, let's say Stephen Keshim, he so rest in peace as well. Uh, when I went to Anderlecht at that young age, uh, he was somebody I was under, you know. So when Anderlecht offered me the first contract, that was five years. I remember I signed five years contract. But whatever was in the contract, they don't know. So he stood by me to sign the contract for me. It was both in French and then English, but he stood by me and signed the, the contract on my behalf. How, how did he get you to, to stand by you to sign the contract for you? Well, I think after the World Cup in Scotland, 1989, uh, Anderlecht, you know, he was playing for Anderlecht, so they sent him to come look for me. So he came down. I mean, what I went through to get to Belgium, I don't want to go through. It's a long story. <laughs> Uh, so Keshi became my father. I mean, yes, he did whatever he could. I left Ghana, I went to Nigeria, then from Nigeria with a Nigerian passport, end up in Belgium. And then, yes, I was living with him, I was staying with him, he took me like his son. You know, I, he even convinced me to stay in Belgium. To be honest with you, it was my first time in Europe. I did not know, and I went to Belgium somewhere, yeah, August 89. The weather was not that good, you know, and I wanted to come back home. Uh, both my parents did not know where I was. Uh, it was Stephen Keshi who really convinced me to stay because he said when he went to Europe for the first time, uh, the same thing happened to me, but I should see what he has now. So he really convinced me to, to stay in, in, in Belgium. You just mentioned that your parents did not know. That means that he, should I say, he stole you to Belgium? No, he wasn't, it's not How like that. How did link up with him? Well, the problem was if I said my parents were not, and I, you know, those days when you are playing football, you know what's something that is called bopa, mm. you know, and most of the time I'm staying with those, those okay. people, yeah, so uh, I end up growing up with the same people, you know, so 
and that parents relationship between yourself and your mother i did not have that that relationship between my parents <laughs> so that's how Steve Kuchi, so, so how did you get to Nigeria? How did you connect with him? How did you get into the flight? I, because there have been so many stories about how um, he stole you from Ghana, took you <laughs> to Belgium, got you Nigerian passports to fly and all that. Well, stolen is a strong word. I don't think <laughs> I, I won't use that word. Okay, okay he kidnapped you. <laughs> <laughs> Not even that. I mean, he came with, uh, I mean, uh, let's say, uh, good motive. Okay. which what he did that's why i'm i and they have given back to society yeah. today uh, as i said uh, andalect really sent him because i'm sure we are just close ghana and nigeria yeah. is just around there. so they said he should come for me so he did not come personally he really he sent uh, his local agent so he's a local agent who came to ghana at that time i remember we were in a kanishi sports complex and then uh, and after the tournament in scotland the ex-president Rollins said we did very well, so he wanted us, they should keep us together. So I'm sure our passport is with the FA. But then we were, we were I think, yeah, they gave us two weeks off. You know, then we should, we should go and rest and then come back. It's during that time that the guy came, and the first thing he gave me was his card. And then he introduced himself, I said, Stephen Keshi, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay. But then the officials of Under-17 got to know the kind of person he is, so... They really sack him. So we did not have a lot of conversation. First thing he said, this is Scott, Stephen Keshi, and then whatever happened, happened. So when we left, I went to him and I told a friend of mine, and it's, I told him that I would like to go to Nigeria. And he said, okay, he will help me. So he took me to Tudu, which at that I don't know anything about Tudu. <laughs> and then I explained the situation, and he said, okay, he went to talk to a driver, and the driver said, if I will double the fare because I don't have a passport, any document. And then, uh, yes, we did that. And then, well, it was a hell. All the bodies, I have to stop, walk, and then go and meet them. No, I don't want any child to go through what I went through. But, well, finally, I end up being in Nigeria. And then uh, I gave the car to a taxi driver. And then he drove me straight to the man's house. The man was not there. His wife was there. She received me. She called a husband. He came home immediately, like two minutes. He came, he was just pungy. I said, ah, what is that? He was happy to see me. <laughs> he also called Keshi. And then I spoke to Keshi. Keshi said, are you Lamte? I said, yes. Okay. So they went to look for a place for me to stay. That was still a real hotel. And uh, I was so lucky in such a way that at that time, Keshi too was coming to Nigeria. Yeah. They were going to play qualifiers. Okay. So he have to come in two days time. So he came to Nigeria. Then the guy took me to his hotel sitting down chatting, he was happy to see me. And then he was a star at that time. He was yeah. a big star. A lot of people were coming to him, visiting him. And then uh, he said, the guy said, a big cashy said I should go and took a picture. I took a passport picture. Some guys entered his room. He gave them money with my picture. And within one hour, I had a Nigerian passport. <laughs> uh, yes, Nigerian passport. And uh, well, uh, after the match immediately, uh, we have to go back to Belgium and then that's it. I was just passing through the Nigerian immigration like a big cashy. Yeah, uh, your son be this. Yes, yes, he might <laughs> <laughs> stamp and then, you know, uh, straight into the plane. And I'm sure he informed Andalect officials that yeah. I was coming, but this is the situation. I was not holding Ghanaian passport. So uh, in the plane, we decided to just throw away the passport. You discarded the passport in the yes, plane? Yes, yes, yes. Of course, I'm proud to be a Ghanaian. <laughs> <laughs> and then immediately we land at the airport. I mean, the necessary document was done. I'm sure I was there for about four hours. I'm sure if it's now, I'm sure it would be difficult for me to come out. Yeah. But Andalect was a big club in Belgium. They were able to talk to the immigration. They gave me the necessary document. And immediately I went out, the next day I went to Ghana Embassy to also give me a document to keep me in the, in the country for about three months. But after just a week or two, uh, I signed my contract because at, at the airport too, the Andalek officials were having argument with yeah. Keshi. I think they thought I was not the one because I looked very tiny, <laughs> smallish. <laughs> I know what I went through to get there. I mean, the stress. So I, I, I lost a lot of weight. Yeah. But Keshi was telling him that this is slanted. They said they saw me on the screen. I look big. And well, but then I'm sure when I step into the, on the pitch, 
uh, my first touch convinced them. To sign you? Yes. <laughs> this is a very inspiring story. And with, from that period till date, you've, you've been doing a lot. You, let's talk about your academy right now, the um, Glow Lamp Soccer Academy. Why the name Glow Lamp? Well, Glow, Glow, I took that name from a dictionary. I mean, something that is in the dark that bright. Mm -hmm. I know how I, I suffered to, be, to become a footballer. I went through a lot. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, the beating, the punishment, not being able to even eat, not being able to, to come home because I'll be punished. So all of a sudden, you know, like I was brightened. So that's, that's the reason why I give the name. You know, glow lamp. The academy. How many years has it been? Well, this is my seventh year. Okay. Uh, after this uh, school, school, the school is almost sixteen years now. Okay. So I decided. I mean, the educational school, of course, yeah. because of what I went to. That's why. But it's not my field. I don't even know how to teach. <laughs> I don't know if a teacher is doing a mistake on the or board. Not. But so I have people who runs. Yeah. And uh, yes, it's going on well. But I mean, this is what I know since childhood. The experience that I have in football, yes, uh, I'm not hundred percent perfect, but yeah. I'm sure I can give back, and that's why I decided to set up the soccer academy, and it's doing very well. I mean, for just seven, eight years, I have produced some quality materials. Yeah. Kwame Kizito, Daniel Lomote, Muhammad Berma, and Ko Muhammad Muntari, who is in Katana, is yeah. playing for the Katana national team. I have some young chaps that are doing very well. Maybe some few months to come if they get opportunity to be invited or into the junior national team or maybe outside yeah, they also do very well. I mean, in touch with some big clubs to come and adapt the academy, yeah, the t we are still talking, I'm sure, uh, at the right time, uh, I'm sure the news will come out. Within the seven years period, do you think your investment in putting up the academy has been worth it? Well, I would say yes, so far as I've opened door for somebody, I would say yes. When you talk to profit, no. But then for me to be able to give somebody a future, I would say yes. What inspires you? Well, uh, as I said, football has given me a lot, to be honest with you. Football has given me a lot. Uh, it was a problem. I don't know if it's not football. I may not know where I'll end up now. So my passion, my love, everything is, is, is really football. Now, let's, let's talk some. Uh, national team football. Um, AFCON 2019 is here. We are basically 33 days to the start of the tournament. Well, you were part of that national team. You were part of that generation who never also got the opportunity to win it. What must we do to win it? Well, things have changed. I mean, since my generation, myself, Tony Abou, Abedi Pele, Prince Pele, and Co., things have really changed. I mean, now there's a lot of money in football. People are really investing in football. And when it comes to our, our football per se, uh, we are losing it. Uh, I think uh, from the juvenile level, we are not really looking at that side. And I'm sure it's the juvenile level that will really produce Feet. the senior ones. So if we are not starting this now, I'm sure we are going to face problem. But then, yes, let's jump straight to the senior national team. I'm sure going to this Cup of nation. It's not going to be easy at all. I'm sure Kusia Pia and his technical team know, know it very well. Now that the clubs have, been, have been, you know, increased from 16 to 24, yeah. it's going to be very difficult. But I'm sure uh, if we are able to do our things well, yes, well, if I say well, uh, let's put money aside, uh, try to put the team in place, play matches, know each other. This is what I see since the qualifiers and the matches that I've watched. I think we have all the materials there, but they don't know each other. We don't play as a team, as a unit. And this is what is worrying us. I mean, like those days, 1991, when you talk about Les Opoku, Yapreko, Gago, when I take a boy, I know where these guys are. And national team, the same. Uh, so this is what we like. If we are able to go to camp early, play, I heard we are playing about two matches. For yeah. me, it's not, it's not enough. We should know each other very well. When we are able to do that, I'm sure, yeah, it's going to be difficult, but we should go further into the competition. You mentioned something interesting. I'll come back to this conversation, but you mentioned juvenile football, Coles football. What made the 91, 95, 
99 squad so powerful that people often paid so much attention to even our under 17 national teams, more than even the Black Stars. But now, it seems our pyramid is inverted. We pay more attention to the Black Stars to the detriment of the youth of football. What advice will you offer regarding our decisions for football in this country? Well, you see, when you come to juvenile level, sometimes it's very difficult to blame A, B, C, D. You know, uh, let's say somewhere the year you mention my name yeah. and others, uh, we have individuals who have their own money doing coach football. Uh, when you go, you say... Oh, but football is now richer today than it was those days. That's it. But now, individually, nobody wanted to invest and do that kind of sports. That's why we are, that's why we are facing problems. But uh, if the government should be able to help and say that every region, maybe I will support with... Maybe if it's 10 coast club, I will support with 100, 100, 100 let's say 10,000. Each club should have this to be able to help themselves. Because now, you see, you do this... I'm sure because of football, a lot of people have gone back. Have go, back have gone back. I'm but, telling but, you. But you have an academy yourself. You see, so academy is a different way of course. Course football, yes, That's I understand. It. But you are still grooming young footballers who will get the opportunity of playing for a national team. Yes, whereby the academy, in a way, you have to invest. The parents are supposed to invest. Likewise, in Europe, all the academies in Europe, the parents they invest. It's not that because now. Look at, if you, I'm sure you came there, you saw about yeah. 70 kids. Yeah. If I'm going to feed them alone, how can I take care of my family? You see, and at the end of the day, it's capital intensive for you to be able to sell one player. It takes a year or two. You see, so there are so many strategies to handle this business yes. if you don't know how to do it. So to tell you the reason why our coach football is, is dying, for me, I, won't, I, will, I don't like to blame anybody. It's yeah. just that individually, it's difficult for somebody to really invest in coach football now. And if you say coach football or a youth football, you don't expect to go to a training ground where the pitch is bad. They have only two football pitch. And you can, you can, there's no way you can educate them. But, but if we want to be like the Germans, if we want to be like the Brazilians, I know most of these countries, they have what they call a plan, a five-year plan, a 10-year development plan, where they, they hire some of the best technical brainers to manage their youth level to go to a national team. But we don't have that in this country. You are an example of someone who is doing that. Right to Dream Academy is another institution who is also doing that. I know of Laya Kingston, I know of uh, Godwin Trump. You people are all doing these things. But we still don't have young talents grow to feed our national under-17 teams, take us to the tournament, in as much as we always want to go and win, people say that the tournament should be a learning curve for our players. But what do you think that we must do to make sure that our under-17 gets back to its yesteryears? The last time we won the under-17 was long ago, equal to 95. Since then, we haven't. It's just like our failure to win the AFCON since 1982. It's simple. To answer this, your question is simple. You see, if, I'm sure, I don't know, whoever is going to be the next the under-17 coach, the under-20 or the under-23, the only thing is to fall on the academy. I won't, I won't say 100% come and pick only the academies. England, yes. the under-17 that won the World Cup. The World Cup. The under-20 that won the World Cup. Yes. Cross-check and see how many people are, in, are not in the academy. Most of them are playing for Liverpool Academy, Chelsea, Man City. The one who won the best player of the Brewster, there. Liverpool. You see, so it's simple. It's simple. But then, you see, uh, Africa, there are so many. Th if you are not careful and you say certain things, you don't say it, right? you end up being a bad person. <laughs> you know? So sometimes you should know whatever you say, yeah. when to say it, where to say it. So until we go back to certain things that we think it will help the nation, not individual pocket who face this problem. What will help the nation? Just the right thing must be done. What the are right the right things to be done? <laughs> I mean, the right thing is maybe, in, I mean, call the good materials. You see, you invite a players. Yeah. And then, because maybe my father does not have money. Yes. I'm, that, I'm very good, though, but because my father does not have that money, I won't be part of the team that is going to the World Cup. Does this really happen? Well, that's why I say sometimes you should know where to say certain things. 
Wherever you go with a German, you go and meet a German club that have been in camp for about a year. Mm. Make sure that they have 10 years policy. And then you are going to meet them and you are not going with the right materials. You are going, you are going with... How are you going to cope? So that's, that's, that's the, is the answer that we are getting now. Okay, then let, let's, jump, let's jump back to the Black Stars now. The, what prevented you from winning the tournament? I mean, 1992 for sure, Senegal 92, my first Cup of Nation was the mix of Abedi Pele. I'm sure if Abedi Pele was on that picture that day, we should have brought that trophy home. Why? Was he the only player? You're supposed to be 11 men. Yes, that's true. But of course, in 11 men, but you have somebody who is outstanding. In any team, it happens. You may have a team that, yes, is... But that year was Abedi's year, and I think... Uh, if we would have had Abedi in that team, yes, uh, with his influence, with things that he can do, we should have, we won't go to penalties. Maybe we should have won it even at the end of the 90 minutes. So, per what you experienced in that tournament, what would take Ghana to win this, this AFCON? There are, there are calls for experienced players. You just mentioned the interesting thing about Abedi Pele. If his presence was there, it would have been felt in that final. Which players, which caliber of players do you think their presence in this squad will influence Ghana's chances of winning the tournament? I mean, with this, <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, with this generation, this team, I don't know the list that is coming out now, but I'm, I will say yes, for sure. Uh, if you have some of the senior players, which I know that they've been playing consistently this, uh, all the qualifiers, somebody like Asamoajan, I mean, of course, they did. Ate and cool. When they are there, I'm sure we shouldn't have problems. Do we have a team capable of winning the tournament? Yes, as I said, yes. For me, I, there's no way I was like, I won't say sit here and say that we can win, but then the right thing must be done. For me, as I said, we are not playing as a team. And I'm sure Kusia Pierre and his technical team, Steve Apia, Olili and Tenko, I'm sure may know this maybe better than me, but uh, if we are able to play as a team, I'm sure we should be able to go far. Um, so let's, let's move this to the conversation of experienced players. There are calls for experienced players into the national team. Some say Calvin Prince Boateng. Some say Suley Muntari. What is your position? <laughs> yes, I mean, there's no, you can buy experience. And you, I would say that there's no way you can take experience... You can talk about experience, you can't talk about Suleiman Tari. But then sometimes, I recently, in my education, I fired my head. Well, I decided to appoint a new head, head mistress or headmaster, and I decided to go for experience. Somebody who's, I mean, far better than somebody who is there. I mean, Ghana education, uh, retired, you know, so experience, there's no way you can do with that experience. So now it's up to Kosiapia to put A and 2 together and see if he needs the service of Montario or Kevin into the current squad. I mean, why not? He should be able to do that if he thinks it will help the nation. If you were to be Kosiapia, would you have invited Sule Montari? This is a difficult question <laughs> to answer. Well, if I'm in his shoe... <laughs> I would have said yes. yes. Why would you invite him? I mean, you see, as I said, uh, it, get to a, a, it will get to a point where you need experienced men in the, in the, in the team. Then I've, not have... seen, I've not seen Sule play, playing for a while now. Yeah. But then uh, I'm sure maybe you could see up here, my talk to him and listen to what he can offer. And well, that's as I said, if I think yes, having conversation with Sule, and I know we are going to have a, a, a camp for about a month with what, what I know about him before without injury. Yes, I, sh I, may, I, may, I should benefit from Sule Montari. Benefit from someone like Sule Montari. You talked about experience. You cannot buy experience. It's not in the market for sale. Okay, we might as well say that, okay, let me bring CK Akuno, let me bring yourself, because you all have the experience to help me win. <laughs> but we are not playing currently. <laughs> and I'm sure, as we have, we've retired. Yeah. But so, as I said, I don't know where 
is playing now. But I'm sure Sule have not retired. So in this current crop of Black Stars players, which player do you think Sule Mutari can replace in that team? We have in the midfield, let me give you an example. The Thomas Party, the Alfred Duncan, the Kojo Asamoas, the Mubarak Wakaso, the Alassane Wakaso, these players. Which of them do you think Sule Muntari can displace or should displace? We well, see sometimes when we are going, you are going in a competition like this, yes, I'm sure. Uh, you may take everybody, anybody that can play, but you may also take one or two that, yes, they are expected you should be able to talk to the boys, advise them when... The need gets there. But, but Steve Apia is in that camp. His experience well, is going to be huge. Yes, you are 100% right. That's what I'm saying now. You see, it's up to Kusi Apia. Yes, now the question is, if it's me, but then it's up to Kusi Apia to think that, well, I don't need Sule Muntari's services. Okay. So Steven is there, Tenko is there, they can do it. Or I think if I have Sule Plus, it will help. So, because somebody like Asamoajan, there's no way... We can do away without him. Even if it's 30 minutes, we are going to get his services. Yes. Would you advise Kwesi Apia to take, take him to the tournament? To take Sule Muntari to the tournament? If you are to call Kwesi Apia right now, would you tell me, oh, Kwesi, consider taking Sule Muntari to I don't think I will do that because, as I said, I have not seen Sule playing 90 minutes football. Or I don't know his current club or whatever. I don't uh, think I, will, I can call Kusi Apia to advise him to do that. But then it's up to Kusi. I'm sure Kusi, because I don't know why the name just came up. Yeah, yes. Maybe Kusi would have, as I spoke to them, that's why the name was just. Well, probably I, I know why. Let me help you why. <laughs> because uh, the president of the Normalization Committee Dr. Asked, Dr. Yeah, yeah. asked Kusi Apia when they went to Cairo. He asked him about um, uh, Calvin Prince Boatin and Sule Mutari, whether he has considered them. And Kusi went like, yeah, um, he has not considered them, but um, if he feels they can help the nation in the tournament, he will consider calling them to, to help. And uh, Dr. Amwa said, they are very good players. I think you should send them to the AFCON. And then Dr. Amwa went and mentioned it on TV. That's why we're having this conversation. Ah, so, so, you, so you see where the problem is coming. So now you can't even blame Kwesi. Kwesi doesn't take them. You see, maybe that's why I said. You can't even blame Kwesi. So now... You see, sometimes there's something that we have to forget. Uh, we shouldn't forget is, you see, somebody like we see, mm. Stephen, Tanko, and uh, uh, Richard. Yeah. Whatever is in football, they know. You see, different from, I won't say doctor don't know football, or he knows it very well. Yeah. But there, there are some elements that, of course, as a footballer, as an ex, Football. is ahead of doctor. Okay. But when it comes to certain aspects also, doctor is ahead of them. So it's a teamwork. But when it comes to this, what we are talking about, we should leave it to the technical team to handle it. We are in the group of Cameroon, defending champions of the tournament. We are in the group of Guinea-Bissau. We are in the group of Benin. What are our chances in this group? Well, for sure, I know football has changed. You see, the, the young countries are really coming up very fast, and that's where they are catching up the likes of Ghana, Cameroon, Senegal, and Co. So if, I would say for sure, the first two, I'm sure, will come out, ourselves and Cameroon will mm -hmm. come out of that group. But then we have to take things serious. You know, Guinea-Bissau, the teams that you mentioned, you can't just say they will just work, they, they are work away like 10, 15 yeah, years ago. Go. So we have to do our things well, but I'm sure we'll come out of that group. Okay, so, what, so should we do come out of that group that has uh, Benin, Guinea beside and, and Cameroon? What next should it be? Because they always say that qualifying from the group is the most important thing to do in a tournament. Yes, I mean, it's, it's, it's a difficult one, but then uh, as soon as you qualify, uh, at that time you study, you've known all the, your opponents, how they play, what they can do, so you should be able to study them and then play against them. Now it's going to be difficult you know, that's why it's very difficult when you are going to play in the qualifiers because you don't know the opponent quality yes. and his weak points. But after the first two games and all that, you should be able to study your opponent, the next games that you are the next opponent that you are going to face. And I'm sure maybe that will be good for Kusiapia and his second character because after coming away from that group, as I said, maybe Cameroon and Ghana, I'm sure our next opponent we should be able to know their yeah. strength. And there are weak points there, so that we should be able to face them very well. 
Um, it's been a wonderful conversation with you. We'll go for a break. When we come back, we'll talk about your coaching career. <laughs> I know of your days with 11 Wonders. <laughs> uh, no, uh, 11, 11 Wise, rather. But I don't know what has transpired since then. <laughs> we're having that conversation when we do come back from this break. Welcome back from the break. We are still in the studio with Ni Odate Elamte, 1991 and the 17th World Cup winner. Um, he's spoken a lot about how Ghana can win the 2019 African Cup of Nations, how we should play our priorities or put our priorities on grooming young talents to feed our national teams. And now we are talking about his coaching career. But one question that I, if I don't ask him this question, um, I would be killed is, you were told you were supposed to be the next Pelé. Why did you not get that? Uh, I'm sure, let's say 15 years ago, I was finding it difficult to answer that question. But uh, now I got to do, but there's something that I can't disclose it. Okay. But, uh, I just thank God I'm alive and I'm moving on. <laughs> so what would you take the next person? If you see this person and say, okay, you're so good that you're supposed to be the next Odate Lamfi, what advice would you offer to that person to get to that level of the next Odate Lamfi? Well, it's a discipline, respect, humbleness. And sometimes in life, you should be careful who you are going to spend the rest of your life with. Okay, now let's talk about your coaching career. Your days with 11, uh, 11 wise. What were those, those days like, and um, what is next on the trajectory of your coaching career? Well, it started very well. I mean, uh, I quite remember 11, 11 was approached me. That was, uh, was ACB and Jamel Marabi. And then they wanted me to come, and I think it was Nanajma who was there, and then yeah. they wanted me to come and take over the team. That's why I invited CK Akono to come and join me. Things went okay, uh, and then uh, I would say that the experience that I had over there, that's why I decided to come and set up my own soccer education, because at the end of the day, I was also, I was even using my money running the club. Wow. Uh, sometimes I would feed the kids. They recently celebrated their 100 years. <laughs> yes, they invited me. Oh, I mean, okay. Well, I'm, I'm still in touch with the Nanan Ketia and the, most of the okay. elders of the club. They wanted me to come and take over. That was two years ago, and I decided not to do that. You know, so uh, sometimes I'll feed the kids. Maybe they are prepared to go off the boys. So I mean, to cut in short, that's why I said, ah, then if I'm doing this, I can do this. Some I can do my own. That's why I decided to come and set up my own soccer academy too. Yeah. So how how has the coaching career been like? I mean, good. I mean, uh, after. Why, of course, I have my calf lances A. I didn't, I really, I did my practical in Germany that was a long time because I knew this is what I would do, you know, later on. So, uh, of course, my academy, I'm the one coaching the boys. Okay. I have assistant, you know, Abu Malaika, but 
uh, if I could, I take over everything and then make sure uh, I give them whatever is in me, I give it to them. So, well, in coaching, you can never say never. Anything can happen in future. So, <laughs> the young boys you're coaching, if you're given the opportunity to head in of our youth teams, would you embrace it? Would you accept it? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, when it comes to juvenile level, yes, my passion, my love is there. So, yes, why not? I mean, one of the juvenile teams, I should be able to do that. But which one would you prefer to start with? <laughs> well, until I'm calling, then I'm asked <laughs> that. You <laughs> 17, that, because I know your academy, <laughs> you have you 50, you, you 18, is it? 17 and, and yeah, 18. Yeah, yeah, so, so... Well, if I'm invited and then I'm, I've, I've put... On, on table that which one do you do you prefer? Then I should be able to say that. But now I will be it will be difficult for me to say A or B. You, you invited C, CK down, but now he's managing one of the big clubs in the country, Kumachi and Santiago Kotoko. Yes, I know. I know what what CK can do. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, I think that day that I called him, he was one of his <laughs> foot was on the plane going to Germany, okay. and I called him to come back. And this is what is happening. I'm sure we all have to start somewhere. We yeah. can't wait when we are 50 years, 60 years before we start coaching. And well, at that time, too, he has finished his coaching course in, I think, Germany. So yeah. he wanted to start somewhere. So, yes. Uh, yeah, after we separated, yes, he has, he has done very well for himself. I mean, I'm sure he went to Dream FC. Yeah. I mean, Keto Kriki is somebody that we knew very well. We worked, we worked with him when we were in Levin Wise. Oh, okay. So he knew CK very well. You know, there's no doubt about that. And then from there, he moved to Accra House of Folk. And then Ash Gold is former club and now Kumasi Asante Kotoko. So, yes. And this is what we're supposed to be doing. I'm sure, you know, most of the ex-footballers that have done very well for themselves. I won't say any ex-footballer can be a good coach or a good... No, 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 no. But we could see clear those that have the passion and the love for the game that they want to do. I mean, we should be able to do that so that most of the young ones coming that should, should follow their footsteps. Because what CK have done for... Himself or for football, yes, I'm sure. Why not? If he's giving back, everybody will learn from him. Do you often follow what he does with this Asante Kotoko? Not really, but I'm, of course, so far as you are in football, you follow everything. Yeah. But uh, and don't forget Kotoko is also my former club. Yeah. I mean, I've played for Kotoko before I retired, so we are on a legend platform that time, so every information also come to me, so okay. I do follow everything about myself. <laughs> I know a lot. I am a Kotoko fan, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I understand now. <laughs> to be honest with you, I won't say that I'm a Kotoko fan, but I grew up in Kumasi. Yeah. And most of people who really helped me to become who I am are Kotoko fan. Yeah. So I play for Kotoko to pay back, to give back whatever they've given me. That's why I end up to go and play for Kumasi. Interestingly, and uh, see your man over there, CK Okunobi, screaming <laughs> on top of his voice because um, he let Kumasi Asante Kotoko in the CAF Confederation Cup. They, they, they couldn't go beyond the group stages, though they did very well. Um, if you were to advise CK Akuno on one thing to do at Kumasi Asante Kotoko, what would that advice be? Advice? <laughs> Sometimes you see this traditional club. There is the way you handle them. Yes. I'm sure uh, if CK would not take anything from me, I'm sure even Skumas and Second Day Levin Wise, there are times that break, I won't go to the dressing room directly. I will stay behind the door. Then I will be facing him mm. to give him eye what to do and not what to do. Because, you know, CK grew up in Germany. He did everything in Germany. Yeah. So Germans are really straightforward. But Ghana, sometimes you have to blend the two, you see. <laughs> so if you are not careful, you, you are doing the right thing, you know, yeah. but you step on, on big tools. people's toes. So I'm sure if he is able to do that, I'm sure yeah, he should be able to handle Kotoko because sometimes you have to give them the freedom to come and do whatever they want to do and then go. But, but sometimes these things, wouldn't they affect you in the end? Yes, until we all Ghanaians or all the team's owners know that, yes, this time is between the, the, the team and his boys. Yeah, but then if uh, after Chairman want to come to the dressing room, <laughs> the chief want to come to the dressing room, 
say one, two, or three. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. You can't I'm coming to inspire the boys. <laughs> yes. You can't say no. So and sometimes, there more bonuses. that's it. Sometimes, uh, these are things that we grow up to come and face. Yeah. So you should know how to handle this issue. I'm sure if he's able to do that, and he's having the support from Dr. Che, yeah. I'm sure he should be able to, to handle Kotoko to the highest When level. was the last time you spoke to him? Oh, no, 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 I don't remember. I don't know. That one, there is a long time. Ah, okay, then that, that's, that's very interesting. Now, um, domestic football in this country, the patronage is very low. But what sort of impact do you think the Anas Exposé have had on our football? Well, I won't say good and bad, but I think uh, sometimes in life, when certain things get rotten and you want to build it, it takes time. And I'm sure uh, the time, if we all have to have patience for that time, mm. I'm sure we should be able to grow and grow something well. But if you are not having times, and then one, two, we, 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 we plant a corn and a tree, we are not watering very well, then tomorrow it will, it will fade off. Yeah. So I think we should all have patience. I know it's painful, uh, whatever happened in football for the past 13 years or 14 years. But uh, this, what is happening now, we should give them time. I'm sure this, these guys are not going to be there forever. Yeah. I'm sure within a year or less, football should come back to football people. And I'm sure with what has happened, we will learn a lot from it. There's nobody who something will happen to him that he will learn from it. So what are we supposed to learn from this? Oh, of course, there are so many things, I'm sure. Example? Example, like, of what is happening, I just said, even this competition that they are even they are bribery, that <laughs> is, is, is happening, hooliganism at, the, at yeah. the stadium, and all this, you know, we should grow past this, 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 this stage, you know. But, well, we still have people who still think, you know, uh, so it will take time. It will take time for us to correct all those things. So which rightful person would, would change the system of football for us? But there's a lot of people. I mean, when it comes to football, we have a lot of people who have suffered for football in Ghana. They spend a lot. They've invested a lot uh, in football. And I'm sure, I don't want to mention them, but I'm sure at the right time, when they give it to any of them, I'm sure they should be able to take uh, football to wherever he's supposed to go. There are others who advocate for like a former player to also head the Ghana FA. Do you agree to that? Of course, why not? If the person is capable, I mean, where I mean, who is it today? Where Tony Abua is, he will be there today. But if Tony Bafo. Uh, Tony, to, sorry, Tony Bafo. Uh, you see, sometimes we say we are learning from the white. Mm -hmm. When you go to a country like Germany, Spain, mm -hmm. uh, France, when you look at the man, their team owners, the management, whatever, they are all as footballers, all as footballers. So if we want to learn from them, then yes, we should do that. But as I said at the beginning, it's not any ex-footballer that can do so many things uh, at the right. Of course, you have your, your, your mistakes and all that. But then if you are able to put majority of ex-footballers in whatever we are doing, because for me, day one, I was saying that the committee that they set, yeah, the four people, excellent. I mean, Masa, whatever they have in life, <laughs> you yeah. can't take that away from yeah. them. But you see, we are talking about football. So no matter what, there should be an ex or three football ex-footballers inside. You see, they should be able to guide them that even this jersey that the Black Queens is wearing, it's not good. Whereby they wouldn't know. You see? Yeah. So I'm not surprised that things have changing gradually. Would you advocate for um, some of your former colleagues, let's say uh, Tony Bafo, let's say Osei Kufo, or even yourself, occupying the office of the Ghana Football Association as president? Yeah, we have some young guys who are coming. I won't say young, they have mature. Somebody like Yusuf Chipsa, Joado, August Nahifu. Yeah, we have people who are capable of doing that when they, they give them the maximum respect. You know, sometimes in Africa, one thing that I realize is, uh, even in coaching, and when I was coaching wise and other colleagues that are coaching some of the club, it's like giving you a position. It's not that you deserve it. Or, mm -hmm. or it's not that maybe you earn it. You play to the highest level, you have all the experience, whatever, but then it's like they are doing you a fever. <laughs> you see, when it happens like that, it means you don't respect the person. the person. Nobody can tell me that when Barcelona was giving Guardiola the team, after he was coaching the youth team, yeah, team, appointing him to come and coach the senior team, 
They did not know what Guardiola has earned in football, the experience that he has, before giving him that job. But look at what he has done now. So until we realize that, yes, our people have done it in football. They have the experience. They have, when you talk to diploma, PAG, whatever in football, yes, we have it. So book is different than football too. is totally different. So if you are able to know that oh, these people are capable of doing this job and we are giving them the job because they earn it, not that we are giving them a favor, we will be facing this problem as well. <laughs> it's been an interesting conversation, but um, are you a music fan? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can't do that music. I really love music. What kind of music do you like? I love reggae, I love high life, I love gospel as well. So which one do you prefer to listen to more? You know, I travel a lot, so yeah. sometimes I go with, you know, reggae and gospel. I life when I'm in my room alone, then I like to listen to, you know, high life. So reggae, which, which artist do you, do you like more? Well, I have a lot. I have a lot of them, but I mean, somebody that I listen a lot, sometimes I pick so many things from whatever he says, Bob Marley, Lucky Doobie. Interesting. Do you regret not playing at the World Cup? Yes, I think so. But I mean, sometimes what God has written is written. You can't change it. I'm sure the closest was 1992 when we were robbed. I, I don't know if it's robbed in Algeria that we couldn't mm. go. But then, yes, I'm happy that after us, you know, the next generation were able to do that. You know, uh, Stevia Pia, Michael Asian, and uh, Asamoja and Co were able to go for the, for three times. So yes. Yeah, in my CV, yes, I think that's the only thing that is missing, you know, but I mean, I thank God for whatever I've done for football. In 2006, there were rumors that you were supposed to be part of the 2006 World Cup squad. Uh, the likes of uh, Otto Addo and Co were all in there, but you did not appear. Were you disappointed that you didn't go to the 2006 World Cup? Well, I stopped. I decided because to I stop. remember then you were at Aston Villa, right? In Coventry. Coventry, Coventry, yeah. Coventry, Coventry yeah. rather. Yeah, I decided to stop playing for the national team somewhere 19 after my last Cup of Nations in uh, South Africa. So I decided to 96. stop playing. Yeah, I decided. But the two coaches convinced me to come back, you know. Uh, uh, Osam Dudu was yeah. one and then uh, Jones. They convinced me to come back. But at that time, I was playing far away in China. Yeah. So things were a bit difficult for me. But I decided to hang over in South Africa after the tournament. So why did you refuse to play for the Black Stars again? Because we've had this thing of Black Stars players saying, you know, I've retired temporarily and I'll come back when I change my mind and all that. <laughs> no, no, no. My, yeah, my, those my, who my, retired to retire from the national team? No, nah, my, my was a bit personal reason. Personal, that's why I decided to, to, to stop. Because I was going through a lot. I was having... So this is one thing about footballers. Football should, will be going through a lot. I said they go on the pitch and perform. So I was part of those people who go through a lot, but then they only go on the pitch, they will perform. Why do you refuse to play for a national team again? <laughs> no, that's what I said. It's a personal reason. That's why I decided to not to play for. What, what will get one to reveal, uh, what will get you to reveal why you left the national team to inform other players when to move out of the national team? Well, I'm sure my book is coming out. I'm sure when you read the book, I'm sure you'll see whatever it is. <laughs> now, let's, let's talk about that book. Um, being written by someone from your uh, former club, Underledge. When is it going to be out? It's supposed to be out this ending of this month. I should have been in Belgium. You know, uh, that was last Thursday to do the last kickoff, yeah. and then we'll launch the book. But due to one or two uh, traveling schedule, I couldn't, we couldn't meet that, uh, meet that uh, mm -hmm. time. But... Uh, we are going to do everything at the beginning of uh, next season. Mm. Uh, Anderlecht is going to honor me. And then the book will be, will be launched that day in Belgium. From, from that young boy, they, they were unsure of, they are, they are now <laughs> going to honor you? Yeah, I'm sure they've been following me. I mean, they've been following me. They've been seeing what I'm doing yeah. after, my, after my life with them. I moved to PSV. Actually, the person who wrote the book is from Holland, from uh, PSV. Okay. You know, so uh, I'm sure they follow a lot. They listen to whatever I've done, and they think maybe I deserve for them to be to be on, and that's why they are doing this for me. Can you give us an idea what is what what is in the book? I mean, of course, I'm sure so many things that even as some of the things that I've said here, but it's 
deep things that I'm sure when everybody is supposed to get the book that uh, yeah. deep. You see, there are certain things that uh, in life you, I can't come and sit on air and yeah. say it. Yeah. I'm sure we all know about it. It's not only me. I mean, yeah. there's so many people. Yes, but I'm sure this is something that is is for life. So I suppose to to say. Would you also consider doing a documentary, maybe a video documentary? Of that? Well, yes, that's uh, another thing. After the book, uh, after uh, certain things that is in court, when that thing is able to close, I'm sure, I'm sure I should be able to do that one. If you had the opportunity to let the clock move anti-clockwise in your footballing career, what would you change? Maybe certain decisions that I took, maybe those, those are the ones that maybe I will change. Sometimes in, 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 a, in a football career, sometimes you do certain decisions that you are not aware of yeah. and it will go against you. But after when you sit down and reflect, you see that yeah, you made a wrong decision. I'm sure those are the things that I will change. What were the wrong decisions you made in your playing career? Ah... Uh, yeah, I do got married early, mm -hmm. that I should have waited. Okay. And uh, maybe some of the clubs that maybe I went at the wrong time, I should have waited. Uh, yes, as I said. But was it your calling? Wasn't it agents calling? Agents yeah, saying, go I'm saying. play Team ABC. That's what I'm saying. It's all get to, you know, sometimes you are signing contract that goes against you. And you don't even know? I don't even know. That's what I say. Sometimes even they read the, what is in the contract that I'm signing, I don't know. I was just playing football for playing sake. As I start knowing that I was supposed to earn money in football was in Argentina. So from under like... After how many years? Uh, that was like seven, eight. I was just a baby. I mean, football was... <laughs> I, my passion was just to play football. Um, play yes, I me. earn money, but not like I'm going to deep down and say that, oh, I was supposed to earn... Thousand dollars, I suppose, and no, 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 no. That was not my. It's not that it's not so my star, but it so was like I've, I'm already in. So I wasn't now like the person deciding. Okay, okay. Though he takes fifty thousand, let me give him two thousand, right? The person now has decided to give you. Take this for your feeding, right? Well, uh, it, yes, it's, it's something like that. I quite remember when I. In Argentina, when I decided that I won't play for, not play because, you know, I had a problem that my, well, yeah. those, my son yeah. was in the hospital yeah. Yeah. and I decided yeah. to take care of him for about three months. Uh, after the registration was closed, so I could not sign for any club, any then club. I have to come back to my former club, which yeah. I thought I still belonged to Anderlecht. Because to be honest with you, from Anderlecht to PSV, I went on loan. On uh, PSV to Aston Villa, I went on loan. At some villa to Coventry, I went on loan, but somebody was making money. I was just playing football for fun. I didn't know all this. So until I decided to come back to Belgium, because I know I was on loan, and then they, they tell me point back that, no, uh, you were bought by your manager. So I belong to my manager. That's where I call him, and then, yes, he said yes. So he begged me. I waited for, Argent for him in Argentina. He came with trash in the house. He wanted me to stay. He will be paying me until he get a club for me. I said, no, I want to be free. Who is your manager? Oh, at that time, it was Caliando, Antonio Caliando. He was the former manager of uh, Roberto Baju, Toto Sclacci, and all that. Did you take him on? For no, 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 no. Why did you not? I don't, I don't, fight, I don't fight over these things. But, but you were cheated for, for a whole seven, eight years. Yeah, but I mean, uh, when you go to court, you are going to lose because even your signature is there. Uh, they ask you read and then you understood and then you signed. No, but you could, you could have told them that I didn't understand. That was why I signed. But and people is... knowing your educational background would have helped matters. Yeah, I understand where you are coming from, but I decided to move on. I, of course, I mean, after I was yes, I, I, I made money. I'm okay. Are you disappointed Kalyandro did this to you? Oh, yeah, 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 100%. Because I, I, as I said, when you go inside my book, you read a lot. Because even I, my father gave me to him. That LAZ. Because when he came, I was very young. I couldn't do anything. So my father signed. So there are so many things. <laughs> it's been a wonderful conversation with you. But just your, your final words. What would your final words be in this conversation we've had? Well, I mean, basically, as a, for footballers, if you want to be, but especially the young chaps now, yeah. I'm sure they run, they rush too much. Even I face it in my academy. You know, they don't take time 
to grow or to know very well. Everybody come to academy or they know they can pass, they can run, they think they know how to play, they yeah. want to travel. And so I think, you know, the best thing is they have for them to, you know, to come down, respect, I mean, do love what they do well. And I'm sure at the right time will come. I'm sure when it comes to football, no matter what, even if you are 20, 22, 23, the right time will come. Especially with my academy now. I'm having so many links, talking to so many people. Hopefully, maybe by the end of the year or next year, I'm sure, hopefully, somebody will, will come and take over. Adam, is, it, is it going to be a partnership where the person is taking over entirely? No, 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 partnership, for sure. I said this was another question, but would you like to manage a Kotoko one day? Kotoko? I mean, why not? Why, why not? Why not? I mean, why? That's why in football you can never say never. Will you coach Kotoko one day? If it happens, why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's because hoping. I have the people that can support me to do that. Well, he has the people that can support him to do that at Kumasi Asante Kodoko. It's been an inspiring conversation here with New Odati Lamte, a former player of the Black Stars, a 1991 FIFA Under-17 World Cup winner, a former player of Anderlecht. He has just revealed on this platform that he has written a book, and that book will soon be out. And uh, just maybe when it is out there, we'll... We might be the first people to bring it to you that it is out there. So go, go get a copy, read, educate yourself, inform yourself about life and what to do in your chosen career. It's been a pleasure coming your way. I am Muftar Onabila Ablai.